Hello, this is Jason Stewart here with Spartan Youth Radio, and you're watching SYR's coverage of the Northern Ontario Junior Hockey League. We are broadcasting live from the Espanola Complex, where we're going to see the hometown, the Espanola Rivermen, battle it out with the visitors, the Blind River Beavers. Due to weather issues for our last game, we handed the camera reins over to the Espanola Rivermen staff. We apologize for the lack of play-by-play. -play. In that game, the Espanola Rivermen edged out the Kirkland Lake Gold Miners with a 1-2 win in second quarter overtime, and scoring for the Gold Miners throughout the game was number 22, Everett Thompson assisted by number 17, Matthew LeCompte, and number 9, Zach Pierce. On the Espanola side, number 17, Dwayne Wayman scored the first goal with a power play, assisted by Cray Roberge and Brennan Dubchek. The winning overtime goal was scored by number 15, Brennan Dubchek, with an assist by number 24, Nathan Campbell. Now, if you're at home, please stand for the National Anthem. On camera for Spartan Youth Radio today, starting out in period one, we have the illustrious Bradley Borsier. In the rookie position for our camera today, assisted by Aubrey Fowler, who will be taking over the second period. And I am Jason Stewart, the producer of Spartan Youth Radio. Our regular commentators, Trent, Julia, and Deneen, were unable to be here today, so the old veteran has to take the mic. We welcome everyone who is tuning in from FastHockey.com. Dubcheck versus Boz Venue, Beauvenue rather, on the drop of the puck. The Rivermen have been very stingy in their four games to date against the Blind River Beavers, recording a 5-0 shutout in the first game on September the 14th in Blind River and an 8-1 victory in Espanola on October the 6th. A 7-2 win back in Blind River on October the 19th, and a 6-2 victory in Blind River on November the 10th to lead the series four games to nothing. Currently, Espanola is in third in the league standings, and today's rivals, the Blind River Beavers, are languishing back in last place. Both teams coming out on the ice with a lot of passion and energy. Most of the action being dominated down in the Beaver side. Several attempts on goal. Nothing make it through the net. 
The Rivermen in the four games have allowed only a single goal in the first and second period and three in the third, while recording 14 in the first, eight in the second, and four in the third. The Rivermen are 721 in power play opportunities, while the Beavers have one goal in 15 chances. This is Spartan Youth Radio's coverage of NOJHL hockey here in Espanola at the Espanola Regional Complex. Many attempts by Espinola Rivermen to hold the puck down in Beaver territory. Not a lot making it down to the Espinola side of the barn. Currently, Espinola's Brendan Dubcheck leads the Rivermen with six goals and four assists. And he has a four-game goals and points streak intact. His compa compatriot, Brandon Janke, has four goals and five assists. And Corbin Bean, three goals and four assists. Andrew Plummer, three goals and a pair of assists. And Ryan Atwood, Robert Smythe, and Nathan Campbell have four points each. And following off with the roster, Jacob Wavenu has a goal and assist. And Jack, Zach, rather, Zach Nadeau, has a pair of assists to lead the Beavers. Very close attempt on the goal there. And we have Espinola's first goal. Sixteen minutes, twenty-one seconds left in period one. Espinola is up one to zero against the Blind River Beavers. Now, I can't see by the numbers right now whether or not uh, in goal for the Beavers is Matt Young, number 30, or Sean Gerbinski, number 35. Jerseys are not so well numbered that we can see from here. I did see a glimpse of a three. Whoever it is in goal, it is number 35, Sean Gerbinski. Seven goal points, one win, five losses. Has a .862 saving percentage. And is certainly, uh, certainly sweating up a storm as he wipes away sweat from his eyes. The Espanola Riverman keeping him on his toes. I invite you to check out SpartanYouthRadio.com. You can also check out our live streaming radio station running 24 hours a day, seven days a week out of Espanola High School. I'd like to throw a thank you out to Randy Blake, the general manager for the Espinola Rivermen, for providing us some of tonight's statistics. 
Normally, normally Cena Cuthbert does our stats for us, but unfortunately she had to step away for the day. After a tight scuffle in the far corner, Espinola pulls the puck, slaps an attempt in the net. Currently 14 minutes, 36 seconds left in period one, one to zero for the Espinola Rivermen. Pass to McDonald goes wide. In the goal for the Espinola River men is Joaquim Jutras. He currently has a .936 save average. Six goal points, five wins, one loss. Rounding out the roster for goalies for Espinola, we have Mike Terrio and Alex Chandler. The other two goalies for the River men are Dylan Knox, number one, and number 30, Matt Young. Nice attempt on goal, but went far. That was number four, Mills, from the Beavers. Espinola's janky passing. Number 24, Campbell, in possession of the puck. Passes it back to Jank, who misses. Make an attempt after attempt, volleying the puck back and forth. Attempt on goal with a good deflection by the Beavers goal. You're watching Sparty Youth Radio's coverage of NOJHL hockey here at the barn in Espinola, Ontario. Busby has the puck, number 20. And the Beavers goalie holds the puck to pause play. We invite you to check out SpartanYouthRadio.com and check out the work of the media arts students of Espinola High School. Spartan Youth Radio is an extracurricular program intended to give a voice to youth of the North Shore area and especially students of the Rainbow District School Board. We're always looking for sponsorship. Feel free to check us out at SpartanYouthRadio.com slash sponsorship for more details on how you can support our endeavor. Of course, we'd like to acknowledge one of our main sponsors, the Espinola Rivermen, who provided us with the equipment for the coverage of these games. Now, I'll remind the viewers at home that our announcers and our camera operators are entirely volunteers here for the love of the game. Beavers infiltrate into Riverman territory and quickly lose that advantage. Number 26, Marshall of the Beavers has control of the puck. Passing it on to number five. Wayneman, number 17 of Espinola, heading towards the goal. Shoots over. Seven minutes, 22 seconds left in period one. This is a live broadcast for highlights, previous interviews with the players and staff and other hockey news. Visit SpartanYouthRadio.com or find us on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter.
Though there's quite a disparity between the two teams in their standings and because Espinola has a one point lead, there's always the concern, of course, that but a team so far in advance would uh, would drop the puck, literally and metaphorically. In this case, they're holding their own and definitely battling it hard against the Beavers, who are uh, who are coming out strong in this first first period. Ten minutes, forty seconds left in the first period. Espinola is up one to zero. Avenue from the Riverside hit. We have a scuffle between number eight from the Beavers and number 42 from the Rivermen. Number 42, Mr. X, doesn't have a name, but he is sporting quite a uh, quite a Movember mustache. Number 42, Daniel Robertson. Does not have a name on his jersey as of yet. I'm assuming he's new to the team. With Espinola currently the leaders on the player stats, Brendan Dubček leads the team with 20 goals, 21 assists, and 41 points. Followed closely by Corbin Bean with 18 goals, 22 assists, and 40 points, so he's one point behind. Third. Brandon Janke and fourth is Dwayne Wayneman. On the Beaver side, number 24, Tyson McLeod is their leader with nine goals, nine assists, and 18 points. Samuel Wilbur has eight goals, five assists, and 13 points. And Tyler Shanick, seven, uh, number seven, has nine goals, four assists, and 13 points. Nine minutes, 12 seconds left. Period one, as they change up the lines. Joining the ice for Espinola, we have Major, Dubcheck, Busby, and Campbell. On the other side, we have Hosking, No, Lightning, McDonald, and number five, I can't see his name from here, for the Beavers. Nine minutes left, one to zero for the Espinola Rivermen. This is Spartan Youth Radio's coverage of NOJHL hockey here in Espinola, where the temperature inside is the same as the temperature outside. Busby makes a nice attempt on goal. <laughs> and the uh, Beavers goalie very careful as he uh, got to his feet to make sure that he didn't pop that into the net. Nice attempt number 20. Mr. Busby, who I've noticed is spending a lot of time on ice. I don't think I've seen a game that he hasn't played. Busby passes to number 11, Major. Nice check to the boards by Major. Busby again holding.
Just over seven and a half minutes left. Here in one, one to zero for the Espanola Rivermen. Certainly makes it easy on us when uh, most of this is in Beaver's territory as we are just uh, above the blue line on the visitor's side. When we are in the far corner in Espadola's side, our current side, we do apologize for the, for the poor, uh, poor shot. We have an announcer's booth in our way. Number 14, Pompey passes it down the ice some action in Riverman territory. Edward Sansom and Wayneman down the Riverman side, sorry, the uh, Beaver side. Currently, the Kirkland Lake Gold Miners are leading the league with a total of 20 wins, two losses, and 42 points. Sioux Thunderbirds, hot on their heels, hold the same number of wins and points as Kirkland Lake, but they've only played two more games. Our very own the Espanola Rivermen hold the third place ranking with 16 wins, 10 losses, and 32 points. And tonight's rivals, the Blind River Beavers, are currently last in the rankings with only four wins, 20 losses, and only nine points. You're watching Spartan Youth Radio's coverage of NOJHL hockey here in Espanola. If you've never been to Espanola, we do encourage you to visit us. We are a four seasons destination with a population of just over 5,300 people. The community is surrounded by beautiful forests, lakes, and rivers. We're a gateway to Manitoulin Island, which is really quiet in the winter, but certainly a beautiful place to be for ice fishing, lodges, lots of skidooing. Lots of skiing and hiking opportunities. Mantulan Island is the world's largest freshwater island, and we are broadcasting north of Espan from uh, north of Mantulan, rather from Espanola, Ontario. Not too many attempts on the Riverman's goal. Just under four minutes left in period one. One to zero for the Espanola Rivermen. Here are the league's leaders. Espanola's Brennan Dubcek is the league's current points leader with a total of 41 points, followed close by Stephen Babin of Kirkland Lake and Espanola's Corbin Bean. In fact, three of the five top points leaders are from Espanola. Brett Wagner of the Bobcats holds a close number one goal leader spot with 21 goals, while Espanola's Brennan Dubcek is one behind at 20, and Corbin Bean is at 18. Again, Espanola players hold three of the five goal leader spots. You're watching Spartan Youth Radio here on FastHockey.com. Huge thank you to Brad Borsier, our 
cameraman who's suffering a bit of a cold, and assistant cameraman Aubrey Fowler. Assistant producer for the show today, Tiergen Malcolm Stewart. My six-year-old son who's currently playing the DS. Just over three minutes left, one to zero for the Espanola Rivermen here on Spartan Youth Radio's coverage of NOJHL hockey. Despite it being a, uh, a, a nice sunny day here in Espanola, a day where anyone with a sled is interested in, uh, in getting it out and ready for the season, we do have quite a crowd here in Espanola. I'm always impressed by the number of Espanola residents and, uh, and other locals who come on out to support the Espanola Rivermen. Not only have they opened their wallets for each game, they have also opened their doors as billets to, the, to house these Rivermen players some of which come from all over North America. When it comes to the assists, gold miner Steve Babin leads the league with 26 assists. Corbin Bean of Espinola, Brandon Janke and Brendan Dubchek round out the top four assist leaders with 22, 21 and 21 respectively. An interesting note, fact to note today that Espinola's players show up on the league leaderboard 15 times as of last night, while tonight's rivals, the Beavers, only show up once. If you're a fan of Breaking Bad, we encourage you to check out Spartan Youth Radio's spoof called Breaking Wind, currently on the front page of SpartanYouthRadio.com. We do apologize for the lowbrow humor, but if you do want something a little bit more artistic and uh, creative, we also have two copies, uh, three versions rather, of entries into a contest called You Can't Lock Up an Idea, one created by our very own Aubrey Fowler and Katie Lynn Bilodeau. So please check those out. And uh, Espinola Rivermen, uh, number 20, Busby, has an animation on there on the same topic. Nice attempt on goal. Just over two minutes left. Going to give a wave and an applause to Pete Rodley, the PR rep, the PR manager, the Grand Puba of public relations for the Espinola Rivermen. We just walked past us here up in the catwalk here at the Espanola Regional Complex. Changing the lines, joining the ice. Dubcheck, Janky, Bean, Walters. And our mystery man, number 42 from Espanola, our uh, unnamed player, Daniel Robertson. So th three of our uh, team leaders are on the ice currently to try to eke out a f second goal. For the Rivermen, we have Boinvenu, McLeod, Barr, and here we go. You bring out a line like that, and they are going to deliver. The looks on the faces of the Beavers uh, players is priceless. Two to zero for the Espanola Rivermen, with one in 42 seconds left in period one. The Espanola. Rivermen have clinched a two-point lead here, a two-goal lead, rather. But when you bring a long, a, a powerful line out like that, with Dubcheck and Bean and Janky, they're guaranteed to bring in a goal.
Slight injury on the Beaver side. Number four, Mills from Be from the Beavers, hit by a uh, hit by what I believe is one of his own players. Uh, yeah, a little bit of blood from the nose. Twenty-five seconds left on the clock. Two to zero for Espinola versus the Blind River Beavers. Sansom and Wayneman join the ice. Johnny Patterson and Walters. Six seconds left on the clock. And that's it for period one of Espinola's Rivermen's domination. Two to zero against the Blind River Beavers. Rivermen certainly happy with their uh, initial foray here following the, uh, and following the Beavers as they dejectively leave the ice. This is Jason Stewart for Spartan Youth Radio for NOJHL Hockey here in Espanola, Ontario. In 15 minutes, we will return for period two of Espanola versus Blind River in Espanola, Ontario. In the meantime, while you're warming yourself up, filling your bowl, come on out to SpartanYouthRadio.com and check us out. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Jason Stewart for Spartan Youth Radio with live NOJHL hockey here in very, very frigid Espanola, Ontario. Apparently there's some type of technical issue with some equipment here and uh, the, uh, the barn is a lot colder than normal. But certainly the action on the ice is red hot as Espanola has a 2-0 lead against the Beavers. We will be spending most of the time shooting far down the ice as it seems to be at least from our, from our opening uh, salvo in the first period, most of the action, most of the shots against the Beavers goalie. On the ice for Espinola we have Robert, Patterson, Dubcheck, Walters and Major. And Campbell, sorry. Number 
This is live broadcast brought to you by Spartan Youth Radio at Espanola High School in Espanola, Ontario, Canada. For the very first time on camera following live sporting, we have Aubrey Fowler, a volunteer through Espanola Spartan Youth Radio. Please be gentle with him. He is going to be trying his best. But on the bench, we currently have Brad Borussier, whose knee is jittering out of cold. Nice attempt on Espinola. Now I haven't seen him around the arena, uh, but I'm assuming that Tom McCarthy is back in the uh, in the seat as coach of the Espinola Rivermen after uh, coaching the Canadian Junior Hockey League Eastern Division team. which uh, saw a fair uh, a, a number of Northern Ontario players make it to that team. Picking the best of the best from across this region. Well, the Beavers certainly have come back with some renewed energy. Oh, a very close attempt on the Espinola's goal. In goal currently for Espinola, number 29, Joaquin Jatras. We have a... Uh, Beaver helmet spinning on the ice. That player instantly left the surface. Was replaced by Barrow for the Beavers. Just under 17 minutes in period two. Espinola leading 2-0. For the Beavers, we have Marshall, No, McLeod, Boivinu, remaining on the ice for Espinola, Walters, Janke, Terrio, Patterson, and Bean. Nice attempt on the Espinola goal, an even better catch by their goalie, number 29, Joaquim Jutras. Spartan Youth Radio would like to acknowledge some of our sponsors. For, first and foremost, of course, the Espinola Rivermen for the, for the supplying of our camera equipment. Chloe Kinnear of View View Realty, thank you very much for your support of our animation studio. And thank you also is out to the town of Espanola, Espanola Legion, and various other individual and business sponsors of SpartanYouthRadio.com's broadcast. Just check this out, our hockey news, plus all of our other broadcasts. Check us out at SpartanYouthRadio.com. We also encourage you to uh, check out that website, again, SpartanYouthRadio.com, and click on the Listen Live link, where you can listen to the hottest music 24 hours a day, seven days a week, absolutely free. Some of the best music you have never heard.
15 minutes, 41 seconds in period two, two to zero for the Espinola Rivermen. Excellent, forceful attempt on the uh, Beavers goal. Almost caught him unawares. Did not make it through the net, but it was a nice attempt by the Espinola Rivermen. As we near the end of November, I encourage everyone to check out Movember.ca and sponsor campaigns fighting men's health issues. I'm currently sporting a handlebar mustache that I've been growing since the 1st of November. And you can certainly see with the uh, players on the ice, many are as well. Some as part of their natural facial accoutrements, others out of support for the campaign. We have a one minute penalty put on the clock on the Beaver side. Still currently two to zero for the Espinola Rivermen. You're listening to Spartan Youth Radio's live coverage of NOJHL hockey here in Espanola. Before Spartan Youth Radio, Espanola had a history in the television business. 1969, the CBC television show Adventures in Rainbow Country was filmed here. And James Bond's Miss Moneypenny, yes, Miss Moneypenny, lived here for a few years. Uh, actually, 20 years, not just a few years. And this whole region is named Rainbow Country after that television show. Espinal also has a long history when it comes to hockey. 2001, volunteers staged a stunt to raise money for the local hospital, running the world's longest ice hockey game, and they were successful. They played for over three days straight, setting a Guinness World Record, which is on display at the Espinal Regional Complex. That record was broken three years later, and the current record is 10 days straight. And who knows, with the injection of hockey fever here in Espinola, there might be an attempt at that record again in the future. Only time can tell. And with this being the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who, time is of the essence. 13 minutes left in the play, two to zero for Espinola. We're joined on the ice here by Espinola's finest EM, uh, EMS. Our emergency medical uh, trainer, trainers are here to monitor the hockey game and to deal with any injuries that may occur. Fortunately, this year has not been played by too many injuries, though there have been a few here and there. We're also not being plagued by many penalties. I'm surprised with, uh, with such a division between the Reavers and the Espinola Rivermen that there wouldn't be some attempts to dominate in other forms other than hockey.
I haven't seen him on the ice yet, but uh, Espinola's Byron Sam is the lead penalty holder for Espinola with 29 minutes in the box. Joe Ecklemeyer and Alex Martin with 33 minutes each. And their rivals, the Beavers, their top penalty minutes are Leo Lightning with 41 minutes, Tyson McLeod with 34 minutes, and Ryan Logan, 33 minutes in the clink. Currently just over 11 and a half minutes in period two, still stands two to zero for Espinola. A lot of action on the ice, but absolutely nothing that has led to a change in goal since the first change in lineup here. You're watching Spartan Youth Radio's coverage of NOJHL hockey in Espanola, Ontario. Coming to you live from tropical Espanola Regional Complex. Aubrey Fowler on camera. His assistant right now, Brad Borsier. And I'm Jason Stewart, producer, director, and teacher at Espanola High School for SpartanYouthRadio.com. We have Barra, Zarzicki, Marshall, DeForge, and Pompey on the ice for the Beavers. Balancing out Dubcheck, Patterson. Walters. Action in the far corner of the ice. Number 11 majors on the ice as well for Espinola. As well as Roberge. Dove check passes on number 42, attempt on goal. Number 22, Bertrand has control of the puck. Sons is off behind the, uh, behind the Beavers net. We apologize for being unable to get a lot of that action down in that far corner. And a nice glove by the goalie for the Beavers. Currently it's 10 minutes and five seconds left. In period two, two to zero for the Espanola Rivermen. In goal for the Beavers is number 35, Sean Gerbinski. He has a save percentage of .862, seven goal points. And he spent 329 minutes in the game prior to today's game with one win, one lo uh, five losses, zero ties. In goal for Espinola is Joaquin Jatras. Save average of 0.936. Five goals, one loss, zero ties. Rare action down here on the Espinola side. Right below where we are on the catwalk, above the visitor's bench at the Espinola Regional Complex. Spartan Youth Radio's coverage of NOJHL hockey between the Espinola Rivermen and the Blind River Beavers. Here we take a, br a pause, a, pa a brief pause. I'm going to ask uh, our cameraman, Aubrey Fowler, going to put him on the line here. Aubrey, this is your first time covering live hockey. What do you think? It's a little tricky, but I'm actually having lots of fun. The problem is I can't follow the puck fast enough, but it's, 
it's a great experience. I think the great professionals in the NHL have the same, same difficulty. One of the issues currently, of course, is I can see by the uh, whiteness and redness of Aubrey's hands. Is it cold in here, Aubrey? Yes, <laughs> it's very cold. <laughs> as I said before, the heat is on the ice, certainly not up here in the catwalk, or as we like to call it, the most dangerous zone in the Espinola Region Complex, as we are the, this is the only place unprotected by nets. Thank heavens we have paramedics just 20 feet away from us. We have yet to be hit. We are certainly hoping it's not going to be this evening. Eight minutes and 55 seconds left in play, period two. It's two to zero for Espinola. And if you're multitasking, we encourage you to check out SpartanYouthRadio.com and check out our sports coverage. We have a player down on the Beavers side. Espinola's number 25, leaving the ice. Other than a few scuffles, it's been a pretty tame game when it comes to the more pugilistic side of some, some games we see here. Skillicorn, Hosking, McLeod, Boivinu, and Marshall are on the ice for the Blind River Beavers. Press Manolo, Dubchak, Patterson, Wayneman, Butchert. Apologize when I butcher his name. This is Jason Stewart, producer, director, and announcer for SpartanYouthRadio.com for NOJHL Hockey on Fast Hockey. And if he's tuning in, I'd like to uh, throw a shout out to K Tim Clayton. Tim Clayton is the director of operations for the Rivermen. Randy Blake is the general manager, head coach Tom McCarthy, associate coach Scott Jensen, and video coach Tor Terry Exel round out the coaching staff. Kevin Miller is the athletic trainer, and John Burke and Mike Wink are the Rivermen's equipment manager. Pete Rodley looks after public relations. Tight clinch in the Espinola Rivermen goal. Nice attempt, did not make it through. Hosky takes the second attempt, nope, passes it off to McLeod, McLeod number 24. Hosky again, does not make it through. Bean, Janky, Butcher. Campbell, currently on the ice for Espinola. Beavers straight up their lines. Pompey, no. Marshall, Hoskin, and Zarziki on the, on the ice. We have a uh, 26 seconds left on the penalty on the Espinola side. I'm assuming that was that hit in the goal a few moments ago. Seven minutes, eight seconds left. Two to zero still for Espinola. Absolutely no change in that score so far this period. most commonly accepted story behind the origin of the name of Espinola. You can check it out on Wikipedia, the full story is there. Raiding parties, an Ojibwe woman who was able to speak Spanish, and some very confused Corps de Bois. We'd like to take this opportunity to welcome our many viewers and recognize that this is traditional territory. 
of the Anishinaabek people. Ani Miigwech. Of course, this area has a very strong standing in the minor hockey as well as the little NHL. Just over six and a half minutes left of period two. Two to zero for Espinola. If you're interested in more sports news, you can come to check out SpartanYouthRadio.com. We had an interview a few years ago with the keeper of the Stanley Cup, which was brought into Espinola High School by uh, Whitefish River First Nations. It was certainly fascinating and a fantastic opportunity for the uh, young people of this area to come to school and surprise, surprise, the holy grail of hockey itself, the Stanley Cup, Lord Stanley's Cup itself, is sitting in our gym. Hundreds and hundreds of photos were taken that day. Certainly a once in a lifetime experience. Also on our site, you can check out the story of Winnie Horn Miller, who was the uh, in the Sydney Olympic Games co-captain for water polo. And her story as she had involvement when she was 16 with the Oka protests in Kanasadaki, Kahnawake, Quebec. Strong athlete, strong advocate for First Nations and women's rights. Just under five minutes left in period two, two to zero for Espinola. Things are certainly heating up on the ice with a volley back and forth from one end of the rink to the next. Oh, nice attempt on the Riverman goal, went too high. Walters, Wayman, Butchert, Edwards, and Sansom on the ice for Espinola. Hosking, Pompey, Simonik, Zarzecki. And I can't read the name for here, number 20. My apologies. Broadcasting live from the Espinola Recreational Complex. This uh, facility was built in 1999 and features a beautiful arena, salt water swimming pool, a water slide, gym, squash courts, public library, and a full slate of recreational programming. If you're a resident or a visitor, we encourage you to check out the Espinola Regional Complex for all of your recreation needs in this North Shore area.
After a decade absence, the Junior A returned to Espanola this year as the Espanola Rivermen. The last time the NOJHL had a team in Espanola was uh, just over 10 years ago, the 2002-2003 season, when the then Screaming Eagles last played. And looking back in time, Espanola was in fact an original member of the NOJHL in the league's first year of operation, which was 1962-63. A long history of hockey here in Espanola and surrounding area in the Laclache foothills and rainbow country. Just over three minutes left in period two, two to zero for Espanola. Being a janky attempt on goal, but fly wildly to the left. Now back in 1962 when the Screaming Eagles first helped form the NOJHL, the season was a banner one for the organization as the Espanola Eagles went on to capture the league championship led by head coach Red McCarthy. Title winning goal was scored by Ron Alain and now 50 years later another McCarthy, Tom McCarthy, is coaching the Espanola Rivermen, currently third in league standings. If you've ever seen Tom McCarthy in action, he's certainly a fiery individual with a long, long career. Having spent a fair number of years in the NHL, he moved with the team from North Bay last year. Brought the, when uh, the then North Bay Trappers uh, had won the league crown under his uh, tutelage. And though new to the town of Espanola, the Rivermen are predicted to fare well this year. And definitely McCarthy uh, has had a strong role in the creation uh, of this team. Uh, Tom McCarthy is the head coach, as I said, of the Rivermen. He shares the name with two other former NHLers. Our Tom McCarthy, though, he played 460 games in the National Hockey League for the Minnesota North Stars and the Boston Bruins. And in 1979, he was the 10th overall NHL draft pick, and he was the number one overall pick two years earlier in the OMJHL, making him one of two players who were drafted ahead of Wayne Gretzky. We have just over two minutes left in play for period two, two to zero still for the Espanola Rivermen against the Blind River Beavers here in Espanola. You're watching Spartan Youth Radio's coverage of NOJHL hockey. Unclear of exactly what just happened. Though we looks like we do have a goal from the Beavers side. Change up of lines. Tell you when we have confirmation. Yes, two to one. Two to one for the Beaver for the Espinola Rivermen rather. The Beavers with just under two minutes of play left in period two, eking out their first goal of the game. Dubcek and Pompey on the puck drop. Just under two minutes left to play. Let's see if this woken up the Espanola Rivermen. They still have the lead, two to one for Espanola, but not nearly as comfortable of a lead. And I eat my words. Not willing to let the Beavers uh, one-up them. Espinola now, three to one for Espinola. One minute, 37 seconds left in period two.
Just over a minute left in play period two, three to one for Espanola. Follow us on Twitter at, at Spartan Radio. You can also follow at NOJHL. And just as I put Twitter away, Espinola brings in their fourth goal, four to one. There's no more playing around with the Beavers, my friends. Four to one for Espinola. Just over 30 seconds on the clock, four to one for Espinola in period two. Fantastic hockey here in Espinola with just, just under 11 seconds left in period two. Edwards, Campbell, Sansom. Nope, oh, changing the lines. Walters, Patterson, Bean, Terrio, and Janke. For, for the Beavers, we have Barra, Lightning, McDonald, Marshall. Three seconds. One second. And it ends with a little bit of action, a little bit of uh, tussling. That is the end of period two here for Espinola High, Espinola High School's coverage of NOJHL hockey here at the Espinola Regional Complex. We will be back in 15 minutes to see whether or not Espinola can hold their 4-1 lead. You never know. One more period to go. In the meantime, check out SpartanYouthRadio.com. We really do encourage you to see what our students are doing. Check us out. Leave some comments and see all of the wonderful things that we're doing here at SpartanYouthRadio.com. A huge thank you to Aubrey Fowler, who uh, manned the camera uh, for his very first time following hockey. And joining us here uh, is Brad Borsi, who is who will be back after these uh, 15 minutes of watching the Zamboni. Welcome back, Brad. Ooh, yay! SpartanYouthRadio.com. This is Jason Stewart for SpartanYouthRadio.com. Back with live NOJHL hockey action here in Espanola, Ontario. Teams are back on the ice. Crowd is returning back with hot chocolate, hot dogs, popcorn. 
certainly is nice in a community like this to have an opportunity for people to gather once or twice a week, talk hockey, talk local politics, get to see people they haven't seen in a while. Cameraman Brad Borsay is back manning the lens. Assistant cameraman, cameraman Aubrey Fowler warming up with a hot chocolate. And I'm Jason Stewart for SpartanYouthRadio.com. Boy Benu, number 18, dub check number 15, taking the puck. Four to one for Espinola against the Blind River Beavers. There was a flurry of activity in the last few minutes of the fi final few minutes of period two where we saw the Blind River Beavers earn their first goal for the game. That was quickly uh, responded to by two more goals by Espinola. Four to one for Espinola. On the ice for Espinola, you got Wayneman, Sansom, Edwards, Busby, and Campbell. McLeod, Hosking, Rowe, Woivenu, on for the Beavers. Prior to the end of period two, we were talking about Mr. McCarthy. In the NHL, McCarthy scored 178 goals, 221 assists, and walked about 399 points. And after retiring from hockey, McCarthy coached in Mississauga, Huntsville, Trenton, North Bay, and now Espinola. With most of the action happening here in the Beavers territory, we are well poised just above there, above the green, the blue line rather, to catch the best action. Nice shot off the class, making paramedics wince and cover their ears. Marshall and Barra join Lightning. Skillcorn on the ice. McDonald joins with the Beavers. Four to one for Espinal in period three here in Espinal, Ontario. If you check out the NOJHL website, you can click on the Riverman link, you'll see the official logo, which depicts a cartoon Tuke clad and bearded hockey player riding a log down the iced over Spanish River. This iconic Dom Tower mill is a paper mill is seen over his shoulder just under the old time lettering spelling out Rivermen. Looks somewhat like a happier Yosemite Sam but without red hair. You can also check out that logo at SpartanYouthRadio.com where we have it on our Espanola Riverman page. skimmed in the top of the net. Oh yeah. 
Some grandstanding from Mr. Martin. Four to one is now five to one for Espinola. 17 minutes, 14 seconds left in period three as Espinola is dominating the Beavers. Five to one. Certainly some tension between uh, two players. Number 19 from Espinola and number two from the Beavers. Not exchanging blows, but certainly exchanging some tension. Bean, Janke, Walters, Terrio, and Busby. No, Patterson on the ice. Five to one for Espinola here in Espinola, Ontario versus the Blind River Beavers. Those who are tuning in late, Kirkland Lake Gold Miners are currently leading the league. A total of 20 wins, two losses, and 42 points with the Sioux Thunderbirds hot on their heels, holding the same number of wins and points as Kirkland Lake, but having played only two and having played two more games. Tonight, the Espinola Rivermen, this afternoon rather, the Espinola Rivermen holding their third place ranking with 16 wins, 10 losses, and 32 points, and I'm predicting that that will be 17 wins by the end of this afternoon. 15 and a half minutes left in period three, five to one lead. The Beavers have to rally and rally hard in order to, to come back from that four point deficit. This is Jason Stewart for Spartan Youth Radio's coverage of NOJHL Hockey here in Espinola, Ontario. You are probably tuning in through fasthockey.com. If you are watching us and hearing me right now on Fast Hockey, I encourage you to go to Twitter, like us at Spartan Radio, and tell us where you're from. Alternatively, you can go to SpartanYouthRadio.com, leave a message there. Find us on Facebook, or you can call our talkback line, 705-869-1590, extension 6264. That's 705-869-1590, extension 6264. Check in with us. Tell us where you're tuning in from. Ooh, very close. Very close goal on Beavers. Puck nearly dribbled into the net. Now it's quite... Well, that was uncalled for. We were... <laughs> I'm not sure if he did that on purpose, not against us, of course, but uh, someone from the Beavers just uh, smacked us with a with his hockey stick as he was exiting the ice, showing his frustration. Knocking over some of our equipment in the process, but we're back on board. This is Jason Stewart for SpartanYouthRadio.com.
Espinola is leading 5-1 to one in the third period. 14 minutes left on the clock. As I was saying before, we were hit by that uh, Blind River Beaver hockey stick there that the Beavers have quite a mountain to climb. And to extend that uh, analogy, to extend that metaphor, Sparta Youth Radio interviewed Spencer West, a man born with no legs. Well, he was born with legs, but they were removed surgically when he was a child, and he ended up climbing Mount Kilimanjaro in order to raise money and uh, influence and interest in water conservation projects in Africa. For that story and many more, check us out, smartyouthradio.com. Again, that story, Spencer West. No mountains too high. Let's see whether or not the Beavers are able to come back with anything. Five to one for Espinola right now. be happening for the Beavers. Six to one for Espinola. Six one with 13 minutes left on the clock in period three. So yes, you heard me right, six to one for Espinola against the Blind River Beavers. Now that's what happens when you get the number three team versus the team currently in last place in the league standings. Just over 12 minutes left, 6-1 to one for Espinola here on Spartan Youth Radio's coverage of NOJHL Hockey. And the Blind River Beavers come back. They are now 6-2, to 6-2 two. to two for the Espinola Rivermen. The Beavers eking out another goal. We have some debate here going on between the four refs. S currently six to two for Espinola, 12 minutes and five seconds left in period three. Every time there's an Espinola goal, of course the crowd goes wild and so does the PA system, but uh, the only noise we get when the Beavers wins is what we get from underneath us as we are above the visitor's bench. McDonald, Lightning. Skillcorn, Barra are on the ice for the Beavers. Number 52, not impressed that there was not a call against, so is there a call? Yes, I believe there is a call. It's number 52, check to the boards. 
On the ice now for Espinola, we got Martin, Acklemeyer, Campbell, Busby, Plummer. Eleven minutes, fifty-three seconds, six to two for Espinola in the third period here. Spartan Youth Radio's coverage of NOJHL hockey. Brad Borzier currently on the camera for Spartan Youth Radio. And I'm Jason Stewart here, director, producer, teacher at Espinola High School for SpartanYouthRadio.com. Number 17, Barra, progressing well up to the Rivermen side. An attempted slap shot. Number 26 just did not have the power of speed that we expected. But there could have been some, uh, some issues as the Espinola net was open at that point. Twenty four Marshall reattempting that shot from the center line. Flew too high. Currently a lot more action on the Riverman side than we've seen in previous parts of the game. Whether that last goal rallied uh, the Beavers a bit, maybe they're a little more refreshed after that intermission. Or maybe it's just the we got to do it now, guys, type of attitude. But there's a bit more action out there than we saw earlier. Six to two for Espinola. Ten minutes, 25 seconds left in period three here on SpartanYouthRadio.com's coverage of Espinola Hockey. And Boy Venue, who had lost his lost his stick, was down on the ice, and when he got up, he just took a wall up, I believe, on number two, Patterson from Espinola. Tensions are rising here, folks. Change of lines for Espinola. Campbell, Major, Roberge, Dubcheck. McLeod, Rowe, Bonvenu on the other side with Simonick and Hosking. 6 to 2 for Espinola versus the Beavers. Nice pass from Campbell. To number 52, 50, yes, 52 Walters. Just under nine minutes left to period three, six to two for Espinola. Dub check attempting. Nice attempt to rally on Espinola's side. 
Sansom controlling the puck, passing it far wide to Wayneman. Butcher attempts, and the Beavers goalie jumps on the puck. It's Jason Zier for SpartanYouthRadio.com's coverage of NOJHL hockey here on SpartanYouthRadio.com. You're probably tuning in through Fast Hockey. To those who are, welcome. With this being Movember, we have around six more days left for you to make your Movember donations. You can be to Movember.com, Canadian Cancer Society, or any other men's health organization. This is the month for men to sport their mustaches. At the end of the month, most go clean shaven. Others like myself keep what they've grown, but it certainly allows us the opportunity to let our hair go. I know most of the players on the Espanola team are participating. A few weeks ago, they organized Pink in the Rink, which was their uh, effort to raise money and awareness of women's health issues in support of the Espanola Regional Hospital. Six to two for Espanola. Seven minutes left in period three. We have Bean, Terrio, Patterson on the ice. And yet another goal. This is getting ridiculous, folks. Seven to two for Espinola. The look on the faces of the Beavers players. Only one had to smile, and I think that was nervousness. Seven to two for Espinola versus the Blind River Beavers. Just six and a half minutes left in period three here. Spartan Youth Radio's coverage of NOJHL Hockey in Espinola. You are watching live through Fast Hockey. Dubcheck passes a major, major back to Dubcheck. Nice attempt. But nothing made it to goal. Just to recalibrate here, Brendan Dubcheck, number 15. Currently the uh, goal leader for Espinola Rivermen. 26 games played, 20 goals, 21 assists, and 41 points. Average of 1.58 points per game. Corbin Bean, 25 games played, 18 goals, 22 assists, 40 points, with an average point of 1.6. Player on the team that has uh, played the least. We have a Mark Terrio with one, and Alex Chandler with one. I don't believe they are officially on the team anymore. I could be incorrect. I could be wrong about that. Uh, and then uh, Nevada Wanda Bents has only played four games. And our mystery man who didn't have his doesn't even have his name on the jersey yet, Daniel Robertson, has only played five games for the Espanola Rivermen so far this season.
On the Beaver side, their top three players are Tyson McLeod. 21 play, games played, nine goals, nine assists, 18 points. Tyler Shanish, nine goals, four assists, and 13 points. And Scott Marshall, three goals, eight assists, and 11 points. And statistically, the best goalie that the Beavers have, if you base it on their saving percentage, is Dylan Knox with a .882, followed by Matt Young with .878 and Sean Grabinski with .862. On the Espinola side, Joaquim Jatris has the best saving percentage for their goal, .936, followed closely by Mark Terrio with .9, Alex Chandler with .887. Just under five minutes left, we have a Penalty on the Espinola side, seven to two for Espinola, nearing the end of period three. A lot of attempts on goal from the blue line for the Beavers. They know that they can't get much closer to the Espinola net than that, I guess. Those Hail Mary shots, hoping that something make it through. The Beavers Pompey controlling the net, number uh, controlling the puck, number 14. Wayward pass to number 11. <laughs> Espinola's penalty coming to an end in seven seconds. Three and a half minutes left in period three, seven to two. On behalf of Spartan Youth Radio, I'm going to be calling this game at a seven two, maybe even an eight two, we'll see. Currently at seven two for Espinola. Now, of course, every time I call a game, then it gets even more interesting. So we'll see how this works. As if I have that type of control. Solid attempt by Bean. Second attempt, and nothing goes through. This is Jason Zero for SwarnYouthRadio.com, reporting live and OJHL coverage here in Espinola, Ontario. Two minutes, 47 seconds left on the clock in period three, seven to two for the Espinola Rivermen versus the Blind River Beavers. Again, the Rivermen have been very stingy in their four games of date against the Blind River Beavers, recording a 5-0 shutout in the first game on September the 14th in Blind River. Then an 8-1 victory in Espinola on October 16th, a 7-2 win back in Blind River on the 19th of October, and a 6-2 victory in Blind River on November 10th to lead the series four games to nothing. And in those four games, the Rivermen have held a single goal in the first and second period, and three in the third, while recording 14 in the first, eight in the second, and four in the third. Just under two minutes left, there's a two minute penalty on the Beavers side, seven to two for Espinola.
The Rivermen are 7-21 in, in power play opportunities. While the Beavers have one goal in 15 chances. Thank you to Randy Blake, the general manager for the Espinola Rivermen for supplying some of our statistics this evening. Currently our cameraman is Aubrey Fowler as Brad Borsi has had to leave early. One minute, 20 seconds left on the clock in period three, seven to two for Espinola. And the Beavers still holding a one minute, 19 second penalty. Boyvenu, number 18 from the Beavers, joins the ice. Joining Pompey. 26. Hoskins. Currently, Espinola has Campbell, Ontario, Wayneman, Robertson. And Sansom on the ice. 28.9 seconds left here, folks. Walters, Bean, Janky, Roberge hit the ice. Joining Daniel Robertson, number 42. In the final few seconds of play here, period three, Vespinola hockey here in Espinola, Ontario. 20 seconds left. Ten seconds. And five, four, three, two, one, zero. And that is yet another win by the Espinola Rivermen. Seven to two for Espinola versus the Blind River Beavers. This has been Spartan Youth Radio's coverage of NOJHL hockey in sunny Espinola, Ontario. A huge thank you to my camera crew today, Aubrey Fowler, on his rookie first time attempt on camera. And he was being trained today by Brad Boursier, the Yoda of camera operators. And you can hear the crowd going wild as the Rivermen leave the ice. Thank you very much for tuning in to SpartanYouthRadio.com. We encourage you to check us out, SpartanYouthRadio.com. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. This is Jason Stewart for SpartanYouthRadio.com. See you next week, folks.